Firstly, uh, thanks to CA and all of you for, for taking some time out of your day, uh, particularly when it's fairly unpleasant in Sydney today. Um, I want to take a slightly different approach um, uh, to, to what you might typically hear um, and really talk you through the process of delivering a solution. Um, before I get started, a little, about, a little bit about JDS. Um, we're a, uh, an organisation based here in Australia, offices in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Adelaide. Um, uh, as of uh, on Monday, we had 67 full-time staff, and I know that because as a group we get together every three months and our, um, our CIO ran a, a, a trivia challenge, and I know that there were 67 full-time employees uh, as, of, uh, as of Monday. We've got, a, uh, I guess, a, a number of major uh, disciplines, practice areas, uh, infrastructure and, and APM, um, service management and service intelligence, and what we call technical testing, which is primarily security and performance testing. We work with a range of, of technology partners uh, here in Australia, and we're, we're very pleased to be a CA Premier partner. And I think we're, we're probably uh, CA's lead uh, NIMSOFT delivery uh, channel here in Australia and have been involved in, in uh, the majority of, of those, uh, those deliveries over, over the last 12 months. As, um, as was mentioned, I, my career's kind of been split in two. I spent the first half of it um, helping uh, businesses within, uh, within the investment bank achieve their goals, and I've spent the second half working with technology vendors uh, to have businesses achieve their goals. So there's been a, a level of synergy across um, what, I've, tr what I've, I've tried to do across my career. Um, I guess our role in, in delivering um, uh, technology solutions is a, is a little bit of an interesting one. There are occasions where we're there right from the beginning. It's our relationship and, and, and we take a solution into a customer. Uh, in some cases, our partners uh, do that initial sale. Um, but I thought as context for, for taking you through the process of delivery, it, it's interesting to look at you know, why organisations um, you know, select NIMSOFT. It's, a, it's an incredibly powerful um, unified architecture based on, on, on message bus principles that allows you to, uh, to monitor both, uh, both traditional infrastructure uh, and cloud environments. And, and that's really a function of, um, of the changing nature of, of IT infrastructure across organisations. Um, you know, there is a, a catchphrase within the CA team um, there's a probe for that. So having a tool that not only meets your, your needs today but, but is increasingly scalable and is, extensible um, is incredibly important when you're, when you're looking at, at something that's as, um, that's as key to uh, the provision of services as monitoring is. And, and plainly, uh, you know, ease of use, both from, a, from an end user perspective or a, um, or a delivery perspective, is incredibly important because, um, you know, a big part of what you do is really around, um, you know, that, t that concept of time to value. And, and spending, you know, 12 months uh, configuring every feature and function is, is not an approach that, that allows you to, to provide uh, the support to, to your business going forwards. Um, you know, we've included a, a sample um, dashboard there. These things are highly configurable. Uh, there's another client we've worked with um, whose, whose dashboards requirements were, were simply uh, uh, four panels and, and for all intents and purposes, red, amber, green in each panel. Um, so it really is a, a tool that's designed to reflect your needs, um, your requirements um, uh, and, and your business objectives. Um, this particular client, um, it's Walters Kluwer. Uh, I don't know if anybody's come in from Peter Smith's presentation. Peter's the CIO. Uh, he was the major sponsor of, of pushing NIMSOFT uh, into Walters Kluwer here in Australia. Um, uh, I guess uh, as context, there are a couple of important points to, to get across to, to you guys. They had an incumbent solution. Um, that incumbent solution didn't provide coverage uh, across their full solution stack. Um, it did require some skills that, that really weren't core to Walter's, Walter Kluwer's um, business going forwards um, and really didn't address the, the dynamic nature of what, as an organisation, they were going through. 
equally they had some concerns around looking forward. Um, so as the business, as the nature of their business change, um, they were concerned about how they were going to provide monitoring across their organisation. Um, and there were some other dynamics of, of things like um, an outsourced data centre uh, of third party SaaS solutions that really uh, provided them some challenges that the incumbent solution uh, wasn't going to be able to effectively address. Um, equally, uh, and, and another real strength of the, um, of the NIMSOFT solution is really a single unified um, uh, platform for monitoring. Um, we, what we have done uh, for Walters Kluwer at, at, at using the NIMSOFT solution uh, is monitoring about 200 endpoints, servers, switches, uh, applications, uh, both on-premise uh, in a private data centre and out in the cloud. Um, so it does give them uh, you know, a single source of truth um, uh, across, their, across their application and infrastructure. So I guess uh, a lot of you, if you're looking at um, how to cope with change inside your organisation, um, you know, one of the, and we heard it from the X Matters guys as well, how do you make sure uh, that you understand the order of magnitude? Um, so we got uh, Walters Kluwer's live in, in about 20 days of services. That was uh, about 200 probes across a range of protocols, both in-house managed service and out in the cloud. Um, we very much recommend that, that clients go live uh, and then revisit. Um, uh, I'll deal with that uh, a, a little further on, but you know, boiling the ocean is, is rarely a, a path to, to success and, and time to value. So we went back about 10 weeks later, uh, upgraded them and made some, some tweaks to their alerting levels uh, and some of the, the um, configuration they had done based on actual client experience. So this wasn't about looking at a demonstration or accepting industry standards. This was running the product uh, in production uh, and understanding how your business reacts to those parameters. So we went back about 10 weeks later, uh, did about 15 days of, uh, of services, which included an upgrade to the latest, uh, latest release. So all in all, we deployed an, an enterprise uh, scalable uh, monitoring platform for Walters Kluwer in about 35 days of effort. I need to be very clear here, it didn't take seven weeks. Um, now that has uh, as much to do with um, the dynamic of what they were going through as a business. It took about seven months uh, from the decision to go with Nimsoft to, to going live. But if you look at the duration to actually do deliver the solution, configure it and get them live, um, you know, that's, a, that's I think a, an incredibly powerful uh, tool around the NIMSOFT solution is that you, uh, you, know, you can get live in a very short period of time. We're fortunate enough to have worked with, uh, you know, I think it's seven of the eight largest organisations in Australia. Um, we work in a wide range of industries from financial services into, into media, into some online plays. We work in utilities. Um, and, and I think observations that we make around uh, our clients is that you're all different. Um, equally, in some aspects, you're all the same as well. You all suffer, and I think we heard this in the, the, the session this morning, a lot of the challenges that, that you're facing inside your organisation today um, change, the rate of change, the scope of change, uh, the business making demands about channels to market to your support, they are relatively holistic. Um, and the tools that, that we work with uh, in our client sites um, really support those holistic challenges. So when we come to work with an organisation around addressing their enterprise monitoring needs, yes, you do things differently. Your architecture is, is going to be different. The protocols that you require, the devices, uh, your specifics around what's, what, what, what's on-premise, what's off-premise, what's in the cloud, that's going to be diff different as well. What helps us help you um, you know, being clear about what are your business objectives is incredibly clear and I don't want to sound like I'm um, teaching you how to suck eggs here, but you know, the reality is about being extremely clear about your business objectives, being clear about what, uh, what focus your management is applying on your IT infrastructure. Um, is it um, end user transactional? Is it availability? Is it internal processes? Um, what is it that management is focused on? And ensuring that as you deploy solutions that allow you to manage 
um, those, those changing challenges, as you do that, that you are in a position um, to support your, your management team, your colleagues in the business, by providing uh, effective and, and real capacity to identify um, and resolve. Uh, and in, uh, I guess the final piece of that is really, what is it that as IT folks you need to be effective um, in dealing with uh, you know, increased load, um, hardware failures, application failures. So being clear about what's going to allow you to triage. So whilst you are all different and no two of you are going to operate identical infrastructure in the same way with the same lines of business, equally the challenges you face today and the challenges you will face going forward um, are in some cases, uh, you know, uh, you're not alone. In the case of Walters Clue, we had a data centre move. We had uh, some some new public-facing cloud infrastructure. Um, what they did extremely well was identify three or four tier one um, business outcomes, and three or four tier two business outcomes that were deemed mission critical um, to the services IT was was providing to the business. That allowed us to work with you know, the project team, the infrastructure people and the data centre providers to make sure that the, the, the right monitoring was done um, in the right way for the right business outcomes. I've got, um, I've got two boys, one who's just turned six and one who's three and a half. They are enormous Star Wars fans and I do apologise to George Lucas that I haven't credited him for, uh, uh, for this photo plainly stolen from the original. Uh, Star Wars DVD box. Um, my children regard using the force as a way to get what they want, uh, more iPad time, more television, chocolate biscuits, whatever it happens to be at the time. Um, use the force is not a helpful way of engaging with us or our partners like CA. Um, we need you to help us help you. Um, plainly, the, particularly in the monitoring space, understanding your own environment is incredibly key. In the case of Walters Kluwer, we leveraged the discovery capabilities of the NIMSOFT solution. Um, it ran out uh, and, and gave us a, an application and infrastructure landscape that gave us a starting point of, of what's there, where is it, what state is it, how's it connected, what devices are there, what is it appropriate for us to be looking at when we start to roll out um, you know, monitoring across their infrastructure. Um, interestingly enough, uh, there are organisations that run discovery on a, on a all but live basis. Walters Kluwer took a different approach and in fact embedded uh, the NIMSOFT probes in their OEM build. So when new hardware comes online, those pieces of hardware are effectively auto-discovered by the platform. Um, because the last thing you really uh, want to do is uh, have any new piece of either internal, um, external or, or, or public uh, cloud environment uh, appear and, and, and you not be across it. So again, um, you know, not being prescriptive about how your organisation chooses to leverage that investment in technology is, is a great differentiator for the NIMSOFT solution. I think that uh, they also made some really clear objectives and, under, and they had a really clear understanding about the changing nature of their business. Um, you know, it was increasingly digital, they were increasingly reliant on, on SaaS based applications and, and external infrastructure. They were rapidly growing globally into a single IT infrastructure and plainly the challenges of managing that going forwards was going to be uh, several steps away from where they were with their legacy solutions. So as I said, what they did extremely well is they focused on the high risk, high reward. They had their, I think it was top six or seven business outcomes and we, we, uh, we made sure that they were the, the absolute focus uh, of, um, of the initial deployment. Um, as I said, I spent the first 10 or so years of my career um, inside an investment bank trying to get people to, to adopt new technologies, take new products to market. Um, and a huge amount of that, particularly in financial services, is around being absolutely compliant with non-negotiable outcomes. Um, I look back in hindsight, and I'm not suggesting that I should have done anything differently 10 years ago, um, but I think time to value is an incredibly um, critical dynamic in deploying technology in today's environment. We've heard today that the, the rate of change is accelerating, that you know, agile shops are dropping you know, twice a month, you've got code releases. We see this in our clients today. It's not about a once a year SAP Oracle 
um, ERP upgrade. This is about you know addressing a, a, an endlessly dynamic uh, environment that, that you've got to support. What we encourage our clients to do, as I said, focus on the high risk, high reward, focus on the mission critical, be laser, laser, laser focused on that and go live. The only way you are going to understand how your environment with your, your business objectives, your sensitivities to email being down, to a public web face being down, to having issues with third party if you're white labeling a payment portal uh, or something that allows clients to interact and transact with you. We can't mandate that, CA can't mandate that. But what we can do together is provide you a, a mechanism uh, to, to address um, your business outcomes using, using the tools that, that are there. And I think, you know, getting live is key. Press the button, go live and revisit. Um, I think the other, uh, you know, really strong point out of the, the NIMSOFT solution stack is, is its ability to self-service. Get enabled. Um, I sometimes think I'm shooting myself in the foot as a, you know, primarily a service-based organisation saying that you can own this, um, you know, and our clients do. They configure dashboards, they roll out probes. Um, there will always be a need for, for specialist services like uh, the ones that JDS provides, but you don't have to be uh, heavily reliant on a third party um, yeah, if you get your, your strategy right, you get enabled, you get live, uh, and you get it socialised. I, you know, having been through this for the last 10 or 12 years here in Australia, it's amazing what you learn, and I'm sure all of you have been through this uh, with one tool or another inside your own organisation. Um, but, you yeah, know, go live and get enabled. Um, you know, change, I think, uh, the, the three presentations we had this morning had, had an awful lot of, of common themes um, that uh, the world's going to change and I'm not sure I really want a, blue chip, a Bluetooth chip in my head and, and a camera uh, um, showing me pictures from Google uh, anytime soon. Um, but if it hasn't happened already, you are going to move. You're going to change. Your clients are going to change. Your business stakeholders are going to demand different things of you. Um, and you know, understanding that as a premise um, is incredibly enabling for us to help you. Um, that you know, you're going to move to externally hosted data centres, you're going to change data centres, you're going to move to multi-tenanted SaaS hosted elsewhere in the world, you're going to have to deal with the Patriot Act with uh, personally identif identifiable information. You're going to have to deal with issues in a manner other than putting them in a whopping great safe in, in the basement of your building. Um, understanding that these challenges are in front of you, and by the way, at the same time, the business is going to demand that you grow. The business is going to demand that you grow at an increasing rate. The business is going to demand that you support channels or customers that you've never been exposed to before. You'll have to deal with um, social media, with people giving unfavourable reports. As we heard today, um, the ANZ guy saying that the last thing you want to happen is um, uh, to find for your CEO to find out that your uh, client-facing portal is down on Twitter. I'm quite sure how many CEOs are looking at. I don't actually tweet, but um, you know, I'd love to know how many CEOs are looking at at Twitter. But you know, you really do need to understand that these dynamics are in some way non-negotiable. They will get forced upon you. How do you get in front of the curve? You get in front of the curve by taking a tool that's that's uh, that, that's that's suited to the the dynamic nature of your environment that supports you going forwards. And as I said, go live and revisit both your breadth and your depth of your scope. Um, as I said, Walters Kluwer really focused on, on top six or seven business outcomes. They have subsequently expanded um, a, a, across, their, um, across their infrastructure. They've also expanded globally. So part of that second phase of work is they've uh, folded in both uh, the Europe and the US uh, data centres, uh, client-facing portals. Uh, that's all now run out of the Asia-Pacific IT headquarters here in Sydney, all using the same technology as they did when they focused those, those first six or seven apps. Um, and, and you know, that's, that's incredibly important for, for IT people to, to be able to, uh, to push that forward as objectives and get live. So what do you do next? Um, look, there's a, a couple of things I would encourage you to do. Plainly come and talk to us. Um, you know, we are, um, you know, we're the ones who are going to have to make it work in production. Talk to us about your challenges. Talk to us about where you are today. 
Um, and you know, we will. We have a number of our our consultants here um, at the, the CA's Expo today. Um, CA equally have uh, a number of their um, their uh, system engineers, their pre-sales guys. There's a demo pod. Um, there is a, a, a great uh, ROI tool on the on the CA website that allows you to go um, look at the ROI of deploying Nimsoft. Um, and of course, I'm sure all of you get uh, uh, get engaged with your CA reps about you know the the changes in the business that that uh, that you're seeing. Um, we've got a number of our guys in the room. Um, any questions about the reality of deploying CA's NIMSOFT solution? I can't necessarily reveal everybody's deep, dark secrets, um, but where we can, I'd, uh, I'd love to see some questions if anybody has anything. And you four down here can't ask anything because you all know I don't know the answer. Um, any questions for Simon? Uh, Simon, I'll ask just one question then. Uh, something you haven't touched on regarding uh, so probably NIMSOFT, but is the consolidation of like lots of tools. Nixia talked about that too as being an issue on the network. Um, what's your experience around that and are there real benefits in collapsing those tool sets? There's a probe for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I, I think that is absolutely and it, it is one of the uh, it, it's one of the, the key differentiators that has driven uh, or drove Walters Kluwer towards the MSOF solution. Um, they had a, uh, an incumbent that, that didn't have the coverage. Having a unified window into um, application infrastructure and, and the cloud uh, is incredibly powerful to cope with that, that change in dynamic that, that customers are seeing. Um, I think uh, I don't work for CA, so I need to be very careful about doing marketing's job for them. But I believe NIMSOFT has, if not the widest, one of the widest uh, coverages across um, infrastructure and application. Uh, and I think that ability to consolidate um, on a very agnostic basis um, uh, is incredibly um, powerful in today's uh, today's environment, I think with the rate of change that, that people are seeing, not having to go buy new tools because of a, a, a new infrastructure, a new protocol, a, a new architecture um, is hugely valuable to organisations that are, that are looking to cater to the, the next 36 months, you know, not 12 months ago when they decided to, to look at monitoring. So I think, you know, it's an extremely pertinent point that, you know, that breadth, that single point that, that scalable, ostensible architecture of an of a, of a underlying message bus is one that does allow the tool to grow with you. So I, I right. completely agree. Thanks. Any, any other questions for Simon? All right, so look, um, Simon, thank you very much. Pleasure.